Hi guys, welcome to session 2. So, uh, we move on to the second example of project crashing. Okay. Okay. Uh, for this second example, the question is to determine which activity are the optimal activities for crashing. So, you have activity A to H, you have normal uh, duration and normal cost of the project and the second last uh, column is for duration and cost for crash. And you, as you can see here at the bottom one, so this is the total project cost for the normal uh, cost of the project and this is the crash cost for the total project cost. Yeah. So the question is to uh, determine what is the optimal activities for crashing. So let's see the first step okay the first step is to determine the cost slope remember i've already uh, mentioned to you about the cost slope so what you need to do um, with the original table you include another column which is maximum day to crash maximum day to crash is where for example project a uh, the normal day is five days but the maximum days that you can crash is only three days so uh, five minus three is where you get two so this column is actually tells you for each activity how much how many days that um, the activity can be crashed and then you need to do another uh, column here which it calls as cost slope cost slope is where i've already mentioned to you uh, the last uh, session uh, where this is the um, cost slope cost that need to be crashed for one day so for activity a it is 250 ringgit per day if you want to crash one day yeah so so you need to do this to a column first yeah so that is step number one step number two you need to do the network analysis so these are the network analysis for project a to h and when you have um, completed the network the forward pass and the backward pass so you will be able to determine what is the um, total duration for the project so in this case uh, the project is 27 days yeah so and also for in step two you need to determine which is the critical path so uh, in this case I've already um I already determined for you so the critical path is A D E H so that is step two so step three step three is to choose activity to crash remember I have mentioned this to you the rule that we have two rules so first rules is what yes activity to crash must be in the critical path yeah so back to the table okay so this table i um i've already included the 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 last two tables which is maximum day to crash and also the cost slope and at the end of the table you uh, you can uh, include another row uh, another column so this is where we can determine whether it's a critical path or not yeah so based on the network analysis that you have conducted just now so activity a to activity h you can um, summarize here whether it is yes or no the critical path yeah so this is rule number three so um when you determine the critical path so we the activity which does not sit in the critical path you can delete them yeah because uh, you cannot crash the one um, uh, sit outside the critical path yeah so step number four step number four you have to uh, you have to follow rule number two rule number two is choose the activity with the lowest 
cost look. So if you look at this activity, okay, this activity is the critical path activity, and you need to choose which one is the lowest cost slope okay so in this case which one is the lowest cost slope yes it is a a is only 250 ringgit per day uh, compared to e and h okay so by crashing activity a which is the lowest 250 ringgit per day by one day you will increase the project cost from 22,450 plus with 250 ringgit but in this case if you want to fully crash activity A which is to the maximum of 2 days so this will be 250 times 2 which is 500 ringgit so if you want to fully crash activity A you will increase the project cost up to 22,950. Okay, so step number four. Step number four is where you need to choose which activity, the second activity to crash. Since you have crashed, fully crashed activity A up to two, max, uh, two days maximum. So you only left with activity D, E and H. But as you can see, activity D does not have cost slope. So you can, uh, activity is redundant. Yeah. So you can only crash activity E and H. So if you crash activity E, which is 1,750 ringgit per day and cost a uh, uh, slope for activity H is 2,000 ringgit. So, like I mentioned just now, you need to select the lowest cost slope. So, in this case, you can select the second best to crash is activity E. Okay. So, if you crash activity E by only a day, you will increase the project cost up to 24,700. Okay. So, um, an activity and, and step 5. Coming to step 5, where you crash the remaining activity and calculate the new project cost and new project duration. So, you need to do this table where uh, consists of what is the project duration that you have crashed, uh, project cost from the original 22,450 and what are the crash activity that you have selected for. In this case, the first line here is the original project duration, 27 days. Uh, project cost, original project cost is 22,450 and uh, there is none for crashing activity yeah so like we've done um we've done the first step just now uh you crash activity a by one day um the cost project is it gets to 22700 yeah and you can shorten the period up to 26 days if you crash another one day by uh, by crashing a it increased to 22950 but you have shortened up the period to 25 days so if you do this one by one by one days for each activity you have selected so you can see here the maximum dur project duration that you can crash is up to 19 days so meaning to say from the 27 original project duration you can crash up to 19 days yeah but however you have to look into what is the project cost if the original project cost is 22,450 but if you crash all of the activity that you that you can crash in this example yeah so you you can see that it goes up to 34,200 200 ringgit yeah so as the cost uh, as the project uh, sh getting shorter duration you can see the cost getting higher yeah so 
if you look at if you tabulate it in the graphs uh, which uh, I call it as a relationship between cost and duration you can see how much you see from the normal normal means the original project cost and duration when you crash a by one day you get this crash a plus e crash a plus e plus h and if you crash the whole activity that you can crash you can see that the um, the graph gets higher yeah higher and higher so this is actually tells you that uh, you can crash uh, uh, the relationship between cost and date that you can save in the crash project okay so let's see what we have studied today so uh, we have gone through the project crashing what is what why and how yeah so why we what is a project crashing to shorten the duration why we need to do that because of these three reason and uh, how do how can we uh, crash the project is by improving the productivity of the existing resources changing the work method yeah and also increase the project resources like i mentioned to you just now the third uh, factor is uh, the uh, many contractors use this to uh, crash the project yeah so uh, don't forget that there is two rules if you want to crash a project Rules number one, it must be the crash activity must be uh, sitting in the critical path. Yes. The rules number two, you must always, always select activity with the lowest score slope. Yeah. So that is the two rules that you need to bear in mind. Okay, so that's all the uh, the lecture for today. So if you understand uh, and you uh, you know how to do uh, example one and two that we have already uh, go through, you can proceed to challenge two. Yeah. So if you are um, still uh, do not understand, you can rewind this uh, video and uh, study it again and then proceed to challenge 2. So, please guys, make sure you submit the challenge 2 by today. Yeah. So, that's all for me today. So, I'll see you guys next week. So, stay home, stay safe. Bye everybody. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.